Let's talk about imperial lathes and metric threads. Of course, immediately you're going to start thinking about 127 tooth gears. The metric transposing or translating, whatever you want to call them, gears using a 127 tooth gear are the typical solution for cutting metric threads on an imperial lathe. There's something fundamental that often goes overlooked. I myself overlooked this until very recently when I was considering needing to single point metric threads on this machine. And this thought occurred to me, and if you do a little bit of Googling around using the right terms, uh, it's occurred to others as well. If you have a change gear lathe and a complete set of change gears, there's an awfully good chance that you'll be able to single point metric threads using your existing change gears within an acceptable amount of error. Obviously there's a lot of variation between the sets of change gears available across different makes and models of lathes across many years. This one, for example, this old Rubette and the Horths with the threading attachments I've found to be very much the same. The gear sets tend to go in increments of six teeth. So you'll have things like 120, 114, 108, 102, and so on and so on. If you do some Googling around for this, this um, finagle your own close approximation of gear ratios for metric threads with existing change gear sets, um, you're not going to find a whole lot of specifics. There is one set of charts out there, or one chart I should say, that is specific to lathes that have a particular range of change gears in increments of five teeth as well as a, I think it's a 21 and a 38 tooth gear. Um, I've never come across a, a lathe with a change gear set like that. Certainly this machine, um, you know, is not helped at all by that. So what I ended up doing was making use of a really slick uh, web application, uh, browser-based web application at, uh, I think it's geargenerator.com. I'll put a link to it in the video description here. It's a really slick visual uh, gear train modeling uh, application and simulator that makes it really easy for something like this where if you're not interested in, you know, trying to muddle your way through a bunch of math, you can, by trial and error experiment with different combinations of gears virtually, and try to, get, try to get as close as you can to whatever ratio you're trying to achieve. Now the trick I found, or the challenge I found, was the ratio I was trying to achieve. For this machine, it happens that there was a version available with a metric lead screw and I was able to find a chart that gave the change gear setups for different metric thread pitches. What I did at Gear Generator was modeled some of those thread pitch setups for the metric machine with a 100 to 127 tooth transposing gear included. and observed the final ratio in gear generator and that gave me a specific ratio that I needed to duplicate at the, the terminating screw gear. That really, once I you know kind of got used to that process, that really made it pretty easy to go through the different metric thread pitches and find what the closest uh, I could come to those was. So some of the thread pitches are going to be pretty easy. For example, 0.75 millimeters, I believe is pretty much identical to 32 threads per inch, like a very, very small error. A couple of the less easy ones um, would be things like 1.25 millimeter. That's about 20.32 threads per inch. 
and if you were to cut 20 threads per inch in lieu of a 1.25 millimeter thread pitch, you'd have about a 1.57% error. Uh, I believe that works out to about six thousandths of an inch over a 10 millimeter distance. Another good example of a difficult one to approximate with any imperial thread pitch is 0.6 millimeter. That's kind of uh, it's kind of an uncommon metric one anyways, but it is the standard thread pitch for three and a half millimeter screws. So M three and a half by 0.6. So what I'm going to do here is just for the heck of it, I'm going to use this imperial lathe with no translating, transposing gear, no 127 tooth gear to cut a uh, 0.6 millimeter thread pitch, a little three and a half millimeter by 0.6 millimeter screw, and a 1.25 millimeter thread pitch. I'm going to start with the 1.25 since it uses the same stud gear that I already have on here, and that's kind of a pain to change with the uh, draw tube in the way here. So on this machine, with this 8 TPI lead screw, and given that there's about a 4 to 1 ratio between the spindle and this stud gear here, that's a gearing that's due to the tumble reverse mechanism that's inside of the cone plate here. Given that, what I need is the 15 tooth stud gear up here, and we need a compound gear set made up of a 120 tooth gear and a 96 tooth gear. All of the change gears for the Rivette and Horth machines um, are made so that you can gang them up into compound gears for different crazy things. They've all got these holes drilled in them. You can put pins in those holes and that locates them and makes them a compound gear set. So we've got our 120 to 96 here. Then on the screw, we need a 60 tooth gear. Same pin spacing, or same hole spacing for the pins that drive the lead screw collar here. Swing and a miss. You can see we're falling short of being able to engage with the stud gear there. I'm going to grab another gear to use uh, just as an idler between the two of them. I'm going to use this 84 tooth gear as an idler between the two of these to space it out a little bit. I don't have any spacers right thickness. I just use uh, another change gear to provide the spacing since they're the correct thickness. Any of you that have followed me on Tumblr might remember that I made this 48 tooth cast iron gear for this machine some time ago so that I could cut 8 threads per inch on the machine. So with this crazy looking setup in place, I'll bring you around to the business end of the spindle. We'll try single pointing some 1.25 millimeter threads that engage with this nut from I'm not sure what. This bolt I think might be from a Volkswagen transaxle. So we're going to use this as our thread gauge. All right, here we go. I've got some work turned down to the correct diameters. We're starting with the larger diameter here for our 1.25 millimeter thread pitch. Got the compound angle set over. Not that that really matters for a tiny thread like this. Got my threading tool set to height, lined up, squared up to the work. Zero out the cross slide here. I'm going to Throw in the back gears here. 
And away we go. Check this against the thread pitch gauge. Lo and behold, by eye, it's right on the money. Of course, we know there's some error, but the sort of error that in most cases, if you're just talking about fasteners, is going to be acceptable given the relatively short engagement that most threaded parts have with each other. So let's uh, keep going with this here. And this is just that garbage, mild steel you get from the hardware store when you're desperate. So I'm not expecting a real nice surface finish or anything. That's a pretty nice thread fit. This particular combination, the 15 to 120 and 96 to 60 gear train, gives a 0.39% error. What that comes down to in real numbers, over a 10 millimeter distance, and this distance here is more than that, surely. This is over a half inch, so this is probably about, you know, 13 and a half, 14 millimeter distance here. But our error over 10 millimeters with this setup is one and a half thousandths of an inch. Perfectly acceptable for most applications. What I'm going to do now is set up to cut a 0.6 millimeter thread pitch on this smaller diameter here, just a hair under three and a half millimeters. I don't have a nut that I can test on this thing. I'm just going to cut some threads and check it with the thread gauge. For the 0.6 millimeter pitch, there were a couple options I found that would work. Uh, the one that's the, there were two that were the lowest uh, error out of all the combinations that were kind of in the realm of feasibility. One of them involves a 150 tooth gear at the screw here. In this case that wasn't going to work because it had to mate with a 120 tooth gear hanging way out on the the banjo, the, the sector, whatever you want to call it, the change gear carrier. And the spacing of those two gears was just a little bit too much for this change gear carrier to work with. But I was able to find another combination that gave the same error in the form of a 24 tooth stud gear on the back of the headstock here, then a 120 48 compound gear, then a 102 tooth gear on the screw. So I'm going to get that changed over and we'll give it a try. I might not have enough of a point on my 
threading tool here to do some real nice threads this small, but we'll take what we can get. Try a little scratch pass. Certainly are to my eyes. Let's keep going. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Since there's nothing to fit this thread to, we're going to call that good and do another check with the gauge here. Yeah, that is pretty nice. Let me bring in closer so you can see the threads in profile a little bit better. Again, this is less about the profile and more about the pitch. Now that you're up closer, I think you can probably see what I mean about the threading tool I was using really has too much of a radius for these super small threads like this. But as far as pitch, let me get the angle so you can see it a little better. I mean, that's, that's good. Very nice. Well, of course our nut fits great. Well, there you have it. Next time you're thinking about cutting metric threads, single pointing them on your imperial lathe, instead of wishing you had a 127 tooth gear and maybe scheming to obtain or cut a 127 tooth gear, think about it a little more because it might not be necessary at all. Heck, if you're lucky, you might even already be able to single point an imperial pitch that is awfully darn close to the metric pitch that you need or want. Even if you're not so lucky, do a little bit of uh, creative playing around with your existing change gear set, either with math or with a gear train simulator or modeler, and you might be able to get yourself out of a bind. I do plan on making a 127 tooth gear for this machine so that I can have a translating compound gear for you know, accurate single pointing of metric threads, but I just don't have the real need for it yet. Since I got this machine to replace my Chinese 3-in-1, there haven't been any cases where I've needed to cut very accurate metric threads, single point them that is. Um, I've been able to get by with threading dies just fine. Anyways, this might seem uh, obvious to some folks out there. You know, maybe some of you just take it for granted that, you know, of course this is an option, but it's an option that never really occurred to me until very recently, and talking to other folks who are, you know, hobby machinists, uh, I, I don't think it occurs to a lot of people, as a matter of fact. You know, people tend to immediately think of that 127 tooth gear when it comes to single pointing metric threads on the Imperial lathe. So anyways, I hope this was useful to some of you. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.